Hello and welcome back to another Rift Guys Wild Rift video. For today we're going to take a look at the underrated champions for this patch and there are a few gems among them that you haven't seen for quite a while but are still very much broken if piloted properly. But before we take a look at them, let's talk about our question of the day. What is your personal overpowered pick this patch that isn't really that known? Let me know in the comments below. For our first champion we will talk about Evelyn. This champion has always been a menace in solo queue. Going into stealth and maneuvering the map in your stealth makes it very difficult for the enemy champions to deal with you. You could be technically anywhere on the map at any point in time after you hit level 5, and this is the biggest problem with Evelyn. She enforces constant pressure onto the map and onto the enemy team, and if you don't respect this at any point in time, you might get killed and the Evelyn is snowballing. In case you aren't familiar with the problem of AP champions, any AP champion that is snowballing literally turns into a one-shot machine. Once they have a lead, they'll continuously one-shot you even without their ultimate ability by just hitting all their basic abilities right into your face. And if you think about Evelyn as a champion and her access to different items, she is a real menace to deal with as she can just run you down with bonus movement speed and just AoE damage. Getting away from her is very difficult and even if you flash away, if she times it correctly with her empowered third ability, she will just follow you with your flash and then, well, you are absolutely doomed my friend. For Evelyn's jungle clear, there are basically two things you need to know about. You want to start with your first ability, then your third ability and then your first ability again to maximize clearing speed. With this, you want to aim for a full jungle clear and then towards a scuttle crab clear for a level 5 spike. The alternative to this is going for a free camp clear into a gank situation. If you really want to, you can also two camp clear or even one camp clear if you get level 2 in the process. This is very flippy so I don't really recommend doing so, but if you have information on the enemy, for example them having used a flash, you can utilize this to get a free kill because if you mark them with your second ability and flash in your first ability, you'll get them killed super easy and can accelerate the lead on your laner and yourself in combination. The next pick I'm going to talk about is on a similar level when it comes to full clearing her jungle, Shivana. Shivana really loves to fully clear her jungle and accelerate her leads through farming and efficient pathing. Once you clear your jungle and get access to your ultimate ability, diving an enemy or going for a reset for another full clear or proactive play on the other side of the map is very possible. However, there's one thing that makes Shivana completely different from Evelyn. Shivana is a champion that can reliably side lane as the game goes on, as you're a bruiser with high DPS. Shivana also follows a typical gameplay that always goes around her ultimate ability, so she's a very ultimate centric champion. Every single time she doesn't have access to ultimate ability, as in being on cooldown, or rather you not having enough rage to cast it, you ideally just want to not commit for a fight because, well, you are a melee champion and reaching the enemy champions is rather difficult given that. If you have access to your ult though, everything changes because you can close the gap and get on top of them and then demolish them with your super high damage. Especially if you combine your third ability, an alt attack and your alt attack reset on your first ability, you will take away so much of the enemy's HP bar, especially if you have Triforce and Blade of the Rune King. Another thing that Shivana really does well into is teams with a low mobility. If you're just able to run after them without any heavy crowd control, you will find it super easy cementing your leads and ending the game in a super easy fashion. However, if that's kind of a problem, don't forget what I mentioned beforehand. Shivana is a macro champion. If you understand how to maneuver around the map and how to clear and how to deal with minion waves and go for towers, while the enemy team is doing whatever, you'll be more than fine playing this champion more than once. This champion, in fact, is a very good champion if you are interested in having high win rates and just playing for yourself in a complete solo queue environment because you're not dependent on anyone, especially given the fact that you're no longer forced to take dragons and can just choose what's available for absolutely free and make sure you're scaling safely throughout the different game stages. The next champion on this list is a one-hit wonder, and it's Annie. This champion's entire identity is based on the first strike and first win opportunity. If this champion hits you first, it's gonna win and there's not much you can do about this because you will be already dead, crowd controlled and sent into the next game. But what specifically makes this champion so unbelievably underrated? It's the ability to play with your jungle around your stun. And it's also the common problem that people don't usually utilize their stun that well. 
Let's just imagine a laning phase. The enemy has to constantly respect you once you have your stun available and can't really walk up to you because you will stun them, go for a quick trade with electrocute and then back off afterwards without them having any opportunity to do anything about this. And this is something many people refuse to utilize. Every cooldown you have can be used to pressure the enemy. Just with your body language you can adjust to certain laning situations and force the enemy from last hits or anything or force them to move in certain ways and if your jungle is around you can just flash on the enemy team or the champion, stun them and get the job done super easily. This becomes even more powerful when you achieve or when you get the Hextech Proto Belt. With this your relative range of engage is absolutely crazy and if you have flash available as well you can catch people off guard from outside of their screens which makes it so powerful. Other than this Annie is a very straightforward champion which is basically one dimensional in its very core. But being honest about the Wild Rift rank climate and generally players on Wild Rift you will have so much success catching them off guard because they just don't see what is happening on their screen or they have bad camera management or just don't know it's possible to happen to them. It's similar to the pike combo which is very 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 difficult to avoid and only the highest elo and best players on the server will probably be able to number one pull it off and number two deal with it properly. The next champion I really have to talk about is a no-brainer and it's Senna again and again and again. Many people to this day still believe that Senna is a bad supportive champion but this champion is beyond broken and there are just a few things you have to do to make sure that you utilize this champion correctly. Number one Senna is a support champion. Number two you you don't want Grasp of the Undying, you want Croc and Slayer. And to double down on the laning aggressiveness, you want the rune Brutal as your offensive rune. Number three, what about a different support item? You don't want Sickle, you want Relic Shield. And I'm going to tell you why. You want the HP from the Relic Shield and the Sustain to make sure you're able to bully the enemy to gain more free souls. And many people believe that you don't gain as many souls when you have the Relic because you're last hitting minions. Well, technically that is true, but you gain as many souls back because you're actively trading the enemy champion. Not forgetting to mention that you don't need to last hit cannons anymore because you really don't have to. You can just last hit caster minions and just maybe don't drop a soul on them but have complete control over the lane state. The next important thing to mention about Senna is that you want to skill your first, then your second and then your first ability again because putting another point into your first ability on level 3 nearly doubles the effectiveness of this spell. And if you think about trading patterns, sustain and overall oppressiveness during your laning phase, this will make it substantially easier than having your stealth. Alternatively, if you know that if your jungle is coming around, you can stealth them in and win the game of simply this play. Another thing which is absolutely powerful for Senna players is that if you have an unwinnable bot lane due to the AD carry mismatch on the enemy side or just being literally unable to do anything in that lane, you can go top lane level 1 and bully the enemy top laner. With this, all you have to do is walk together through the bushes in lane and attack the enemy. With the relic afterwards and enforcing heavy trades on the enemy, you can crash the wave instantly and dive the enemy top laner. Depending on the champions that are facing in the Baron lane, this has absolutely no counterpart unless the enemy support is mimicking this and then you just win the game for free. If you're wondering or if you're afraid that the AD carry might end, don't worry about this. AD carries usually, and you will hate to hear this, will not have any impact and they most of the time have the main character syndrome. If you want to put yourself in a situation where you can't win lane anyway in the dragon lane, you're more than welcome to do so. But if you want to win your game, you have to think outside of the box and be proactive on the map. A support isn't linked to the dragon lane and this needs to be understood for all eternity. The last champion I need to talk about is Braum. This champion has been a solid backbone for so many seasons but has been under the radar for all eternity. Especially given the fact that we have so many melee centric champions and soon having more AD carry oriented champions with the update in 4.2, Braum can become an absolute demon champion. But why is that so? Braum is a very durable champion that is very tanky and has access to cheap items with Warmog's armor and to protect his vow. This will grant him armor and a lot of bonus health to make him very formidable as a frontliner. To add to this and make him even stronger is the fact that he can block all incoming projectiles with his third ability. If you add something else to the mix that he can relocate himself and apply crowd control to the enemy champions, it becomes very troublesome for enemy champions. There's also something that many people don't utilize, 
For example, let's imagine you're playing Lucian and Brom in the laning phase. The Brom can hide away far far away from the wave in a brush for example and then use a second ability to jump on an allied minion if the enemy goes too close to apply for example poke damage or go for a last hit or anything along those lines and then apply his passive ability with an auto attack. With the passive now applied your AD carry a ranged champion can proc this ability in fact this Lucian and you can use his passive to proc it super fast and then you can lock down the enemy champion and kill them. If they're isolated outside of the minion wave you can now hit your first ability which will apply the slow and then running away from you becomes literally impossible. And I see way too little people utilize minions or generally just targets to jump over walls and be creative with their positioning and then applying their passive ability because this is something that's very vital to Braum and making him very strong as he's a very fierce champion because the moment you apply this passive everyone has to constantly think about the fact that they're about to get stunned. If they get stunned they might get one shot in this crowd control time. This is very dangerous and you need to really think about this. And that's it for today's video. Thank you all for watching and if you enjoyed the video leave a like and subscribe to the channel and come back for more Rift Kites content.